welcome back everyone on today's video we're going to be talking about t-shifting and why is it important that we learn about this so for t-shifting if you remember from the s-shifting it's something pretty similar but before that we need to talk about the unit step function that we also going to be going to be talking a little bit more detail in, a, in another video but for the t-shifting or also known as the second shifting theorem Basically, what we're doing is we want to do a shift and from the uh, T to the S domain, we're going to do the shifting. So for the unit step function, you can see it looks like the following. We have U of T minus A, where this is equal to uh, zero or one, depending on where we are. So let's say we have a function. Uh, we have then that we're moving along the, of course, uh, the x or the, the y and t graph. If we are at a value be before a, our function is zero. If we are at a value above a, our value changes to a1. This is the unit stem function, where the, you can see the values are just zero and one. So depending on where we are, we can either, for example, you can consider this as something like a switch that the voltage before it's before you turn on the switch, it's a zero. And as soon as you turn on the switch, the voltage is a one. You can do similar things with computers, you know, with zeros and ones, depending on the voltage input or, or anything, whatever the input may be. So this is how you represent that as a unit step function. So uh, we have also that if you multiply the unit step function times a, another function, that function becomes shift. Or in this one, you can see that whenever we have a function of t minus a times the unit step function, uh, the function will be, or basically the, the output is zero if you are below a, and after you're above a, the function actually does start appearing in the graph. Which leads us to this important theorem that we see here, the definition. So whenever we take the Laplace of a function times the unit step function, what we get is an exponential in the S domain times the Laplace of that original function. So you can see this is the inverse, basically, it will be the S shifting is. So, and also you can see that if you take the Laplace inverse of an exponential in the S times a function of S, you get the unit step function as a result times whatever function uh, the Laplace is. So you can see once again, the S shift, we have a, an exponential on the T, which corresponds to a shift in the S once we have the Laplace transform. The T shift, we have an exponential in the S domain, and that will correspond to a shift in the T's once you are back in the T domain. So let's look at a few examples and let's see how this works. So, and here we have the original function, it's T squared and it exists between one and two. So if you're given something like this, you are supposed to write it like this. T squared times the unit step function of T minus one minus the unit step function of T minus two or whatever other uh, values we could have been given here. So after this, we distribute, we're multiplying. So we distribute the T, T squared. So we're gonna get T squared times U of T minus one minus t squared times u of t minus two. So uh, this is where we apply the t-shift theorem. So once again, you can see a function times a unit step function. So what we're gonna do, it's we're gonna be shifting any t's present for t minus one, and we're gonna get a corresponding exponential to the s minus one once we take the Laplace. And for the second part, we're going to be shifting any t's for t minus 2 and then multiplying times e to a negative 2s. So after we do that, you can see that what, well, before we had t squared, now we have t minus 1 squared. And the other one, we have t minus 2 squared. So, of course, we can, before we take the Laplace of that, we can expand the, the parentheses, expand the quadratic. We're going to get that we will be taking the Laplace of t squared minus 2t plus 1. And once we take that Laplace, we multiply it on the exponential of e to the negative s. And same thing for the other side of t squared minus 4t plus 4 times e to the negative 2s. 
So finally, the Laplace of, of t squared to t and one, they're pretty straightforward. You can get it from the table. The Laplace of t squared, that's just uh, two factorial over s cubed. The Laplace of two t, that's two over s squared. And the Laplace of one is just one over s. And out of that, it's multiplied times e to the negative s. On the other side, once again, t squared, two factorial over s cubed. Um, 4t, the plus of that is just 4 over s squared. And the plus of, the plus of 4 is just 4, 4 over s. And all of that is multiplied times e to the negative 2s. So you can see, once again, if we have something in the t domain that's multiplied times a unit step, a step function, all it does is that it multiplies it, uh, the Laplace. We shift it first, and then we find the Laplace of that. And then it has a corresponding exponential in the S domain. All right. Another example we have here, and this is written already really like this. We're taking the Laplace of t minus 4 squared times u of t minus 4. This one has already shifted before. So you can see once again, if we recognize that there's a shift there, t minus 4 times u of t minus 4, we know that's a t shift. And therefore, when we have a t shift, it means that we we can get rid of that uh, that unit step function and replace it for an e to the negative 4s. Uh, and then we can expand everything inside the parentheses of this quadratic. We're going to get t squared minus 8t plus 16 times e to the negative 4s. We take the Laplace of each individual one, which will be 2 over x cubed minus 8 over s squared plus 16 over s and after that i mean that's just our result so you can see taking the, sh the t shift is pretty straightforward it's nothing difficult at all so let's look at two more examples before we wrap up this video all right so in this one we are taking the laplace inverse of s times e to negative 2 s or s squared plus 16. so let's see what we get here you will notice that we have an exponential in the s domain, which here I color in green and just kind of like took it out, but it's, it's still I just it's still basically the same. I just move it out. Um, and you will notice that if we have an exponential in the s domain, that basically corresponds to a t shift. So I will take the Laplace as always of whatever my function is. It is in this case is s over s squared plus sixteen. And that t shift, or well, that exponential, once I take it out, it will be translated into uh, a unit step function of u of t minus 2. And every t that comes up once we get a function of t will be replaced by t minus 2. So s over s squared plus 16, that's just a cosine of 4t. In this case, the four, we have uh, 4t, so that t will be replaced for t minus 2. And then we're going to multiply all of that times u of t minus 2. So we can distribute the 4, and we're going to get, therefore, that my solution to so this Laplace inverse is cosine of 4t minus 8 times the unit step function u of t minus 2. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. Every time you have the exponential in the s domain, it just corresponds to that t shift in the t domain. And this other example here, we have e to the negative pi s plus e to the negative 3 pi s over s squared plus 1. So first thing we can do is break this into two, their own two Laplaces, right? We can use the linearity theorem of the linearity property. And you can see that if I factor out those exponentials, I'll have 1 over s squared plus 1 uh, on both sides, each one multiplied times their own corresponding exponential. And once again, those exponentials in green, exponentials in the S domain, correspond to T shifts, which I can rewrite as uh, the, the unit set function. So in the first one, we have U of T minus pi, where T will be replaced for T minus pi. And the second one, we have U of T minus 3 pi, where T will be replaced by T minus 3 pi. And you'll notice that for each one of those, one raised squared plus one, that's just sine, so sine of t. So let's replace those t's for the corresponding t minus pi and t minus three pi. You can see both of them times u of t minus three pi. And then my resulting solution is just 
sine of t minus pi times u t minus pi plus sine of t minus 3 pi times u 3 uh, t minus 3 pi. And that is the solution to this problem. So we'll see more about the T-shift in uh, later videos where we're going to be solving um, differential equations with the unit step function and the direct delta function. But we'll, we'll cover those topics um, in a different video. So that's it for now. And as always, good luck. Mm -hmm.